right. Well, hello and welcome. Yeah, welcome and hello, you guys. Today is Thursday, which means that it is vlog day. Welcome. I have a full on, full on action freaking packed vlog for you guys this week. I can't do that thing anymore where I put all the timestamps up here, but my main man, Jeremy V, I hope he's, I think he's in chat. I'm not 100% sure if he's in chat. I think I seen him in chat. He's gonna get all those timestamps and he's gonna put them in the first pinned comment right underneath this video. That first comment, boosh, it'll be pinned there, boosh, all the timestamps. But welcome, you guys, together at home, still quarantining down. Like I said, we got a full vlog this week. We got uh, a very random, I'm really most excited about the very random liquid tasting. I usually go in order. I usually say, oh, we got a beer, we got a this, we got a that, and then we got a very random liquid tasting. No, this week, I have not stopped thinking about this very random liquid tasting. It's sitting right here underneath my camera. I kind of keep glancing at it. Really excited about this liquid tasting this week. But we've got a myriad of subjects. Thanks, Ruby Roo. Myriad of, of segments this week. We do have a beer right there that I'm very excited about. I'm gonna real quickly talk about what I've been vaping. I do have some mail. Like I said, we have a liquid tasting. It's gonna it's gonna be another Beecher Indonesia juice. Yeah, weird Indonesia juices. I'll even give you guys an update on the green bean shortly. But the green bean, spoiler alert, the green bean is kind of stuck around. We got most of the segments tonight. We're gonna to be doing the super chats at the end of every single segment. But I think the first thing we're gonna do right now, let's all hear. This puts me in a better mood. I just wanna play it because it just puts me in a better mood. My bro, Omboy OC. Take it away, Dwayne. I believe I can fly. <laughs> I believe I could touch the sky any time <laughs> of year. Dun dun, ah. dun 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 dun. <laughs> I believe I can fly. Man, I'll just uh, I'll just never get sick of li <laughs> just I'll just never get sick of uh, listening to Dwayne. Sing to me. Best voicemail ever. Anyway, that was the Yawk song. If anybody, like if there's a super chat later on, you can request the Yawk song. Like if, if, if a lot of people want to hear it again and just, man, I'm feeling down. I really need to hear that. I need to hear Dwayne sing again. I need to hear that Yawk song. You can request the Yawk song. Actually, now the very, very first thing I want to do. Where is it? This is it. I want to hear from this. I want to do that thing where I get to hear from one of my subscribers. I'm trying to track down his name. I wrote down Dan Clack. Dan Clack? All right. I typed in Dan Clack, so I'm hoping it, I'm hoping this man's name is Dan Clack. But anyway, let's hear from Dan real quickly. Nope. Hang on. Speaking of a Dan Clack, how about a freaking Dangle Clack? There weren't enough of those on Wednesday, I suppose. Here we go. This is Dan Clack. One more time. Dan Clack. <laughs> Here is Dan Clack. If you are, if one of your patients are smoking before age 20, they have a higher addiction rate <laughs> yeah. throughout the rest of their lives for other addictive drugs or alcohol and things like that. So it is a really serious concern. The second thing that I want patients to know is that it's not a safe alternative to smoking. What? There's a lot of chemicals in vaping pods, and we don't know the long-term effects yet, but we do know that those chemicals puts them at Now risk. I'm going to skip the ad. And the third thing we... Why are they doing this to you, man? Why are they doing this to you? <clears throat> yeah.
What the hell? So my it li That's okay. I appreciate everybody in the chat and the texts, text messages. Thank you. I appreciate that. Thank you Michelle Lynn. Thank you. The thing the problem is and here's here's the here's the problem that I'm going to explain is that um <laughs> the pro here's the problem. The chat is still going bananas. It's because there is almost a 30 second delay between when I talk and when you guys see it and hear it. So the video ended and I'm talking and I just see the chat going and I think, well, everything must be fine, right? Turns out it wasn't. Turns out I didn't turn the audio back on. So that's the main problem. I'm blaming this on everybody but myself. I'm not responsible. I'm not responsible for this. I never called it a hoax. You, you definitely did call it a hoax, right? We've all seen Donald Trump call it a hoax. I did call it a hoax. You definitely did. Uh, to answer your question, Dan Clack, if that is your real name, Dan Clack, I hope it's your real name, Dan Clack. See, there we go. Michelle Lynn notifications. You're muted. You're muted. You're muted. Appreciate that. Dan Clack, I don't know. I was shocked. I was, I, he sent me this video and I was just watching it and I'm like, oh, this is an anti-vape ad. I think, I think I may have seen this one before. Maybe it's a television commercial and then boosh, my video plays right after it. Why are they doing that on my videos? That upsets me. A, and really upsets me. B, honestly, my favorite part of that video is when uh, Dan, when they're talking about, oh, sm you know, vaping is not a, you know, cessation from smoking. And Dan, Dan you can hear him just go, what? <laughs> That's my favorite part. Well, Dan, I appreciate that video. It is nonsensical as it was and as enraging as it was. I appreciate that video. And uh, if anybody else out there has any videos like Dan's that you want to send over to me, you want to you wanna shout yourself out? You want to shout your shop out, show off some gear, shoot the shit, talk shop, whatever. You can send them on over to me, nick at grimgreen.com. Just mark your subject, that one thing. Chances are I'll see the attachment. And you never know, it might... It might just get featured on, on a vlog, on a vlog stream. So Dan Clack, appreciate that, Dan Clack. And I don't appreciate you, Stream Deck, acting like a dick all the time. Audio off. Audio on. Okay, was that so hard? What? <laughs> was that so hard, you, st you freaking Stream Deck? Let's see if you can do this correctly. I think it's time, now that I'm all aggravated and dry mouthed, to have some beer. Let's see if the beer button works. Okay, beer, go. Woohoo! Now, the beer that we have tonight, I apologize, YouTube is informing me that you might experience buffering. And I apologize if you're experiencing buffering. There could just be a lot of things on the Wi-Fi at home right now that could be what's happening. You might be experiencing buffering. So I apologize if anybody is experiencing, <laughs> experiencing buffering. That's not something that you should be experiencing in 2020. We're all on COVID quarantine, so yeah, everybody's using, everybody's using the Wi-Fi. Everybody in the world is using Wi-Fi. That commercial, what? That commercial was on before you tuned in just now on the live stream? What? That is ridiculous. All right, well, shit. Let's talk about the beer that we're going to drink tonight. The beer that we're drinking tonight is the beer that we got last week in the vlog, in the mail. This comes from Paul. Oh, not much buffering going on? Okay, thank you, Danielle. This came from Paul. Paul sent this to me. Thank you, Paul, for the Vape Tricks beer. Prairie Artisan Ales Vape Tricks. Man, I have been waiting to try this. We talked about this beer not that long ago, maybe a month and a half ago, maybe two months ago in the vlog, Vape Tricks. It was in like in the news segment, Vape Tricks. Now, I don't know anything about this beer. So I'm going to try to find out some information about this beer. Let's check on Beer Advocate, but first let's open it. Don't you just love that sound? I'm going to be pouring this into a 
Vintage, bro, vintage Grim Army tulip style glass. Oh, right over my phone. Oh, look at this. This is a sour of some sort. Who knew? I didn't. Was anybody else not expecting that to come out in such like a bright, vivid, red, pinkish hue color? That was completely unexpected, at least by me. I guess if you've had it before, you'd, you'd be like, no, that's, you know, whatever. It's perfectly normal. American Wild Ale, 5.9% ABV, brewed in Oklahoma, United States. Almost the same color. I don't know what that means. We get into the taste. Honestly, the smell of garbage on a hot summer sidewalk. What? Okay, this is ruining this for me. I shouldn't be looking at Beer Advocate so soon. See, that ruined it for me. I shouldn't have done that. Let's go in blind. Let's taste the Prairie Artisan Ales Vape Tricks Beer. <laughs> Dr Grim Green, remember when you forced me to drink that 11 a.m. on my birthday? Yes, and I'm. you're welcome because I know that you enjoyed it. Anyway, cheers. Vape Tricks, this is for you guys. Uh, yeah, it's a, it's definitely a sour. Look, I don't love this. I, uh, I kind of don't love this. It's a sour. And sometimes for me, sours have that like acidic vinegary type of sensation to them. It's not like Duchess, like Duchess de Burgongi, Ruby Roo. The Duchess is a sour, but it's, it's sweet. It doesn't have that like vinegary kind of experience to it. This does. This has that like, I know it's supposed to be like sour cherries or something like that. It tastes vinegary to me. It tastes vinegary to me. And I w probably would have got that even if I didn't look at Beer Advocate, but I can still see Beer Advocate out of the corner of my eye and it's polluting my brain right now. I'm gonna see if it smells like garbage like this guy says. Um, no, it doesn't smell bad, honestly. It smells like raspberries, like really fresh, tart raspberries. It doesn't smell like garbage. Why would this guy say it's, it smells like garbage? It doesn't smell like garbage. Not very sour. This guy says it's not very sour. The cher cherry is definitely there, but like a generic soda. Hints of vinegar and morning beth breath. Um, not sure I get <laughs> morning breath. The fuck? Not sure I get morning breath, but I definitely get some strong uh, vinegariness to it. Yeah, it's just not. Uh, it's just not great. It's fine. It, there's some cherryness. There's some sourness to it. There's a little bit of sweetness, but really overwhelmingly, I get like this, almost like rotten fruit kind of vinegar flavor from it. Man, what a letdown. Now, if I was to put on my tinfoil hat, which I'm not going to do, but if I was to put on my tinfoil hat, I'm thinking maybe they made this Vape Tricks beer bad on purpose so that people will further associate negative things with vaping. You know, it's like that's how Stanton Glantz did his studies all people had to do is associate heart attacks with vaping. Even if later it gets retracted, the collect the connection is already there. People are going to associate vaping and heart attacks, vaping and heart attacks. Now people are going to associate bad beer, vape tricks, bad beer, vape tricks. When someone does a vape trick, their mouth, they'll taste it in their mouth. They'll be like armpits or like sour cherry stems. Look, I'm making it out to be a little bit worse than it is. It's not awful. It's not offensive. It's not offensive. I drink garbage. Nah, I might drink some garbage. You're not the boss of me. It's not offensive, but it's just not. I don't really have anything to pair this with. I truly and honestly don't. I might be able to. Oh, let's try. Let's try this. This is a grapefruit flavor. I'm going to talk about it when I get to what I've been vaping, but it's a grapefruit flavor. Let's try grapefruit with vape tricks, because why not? Because America. Sure. You know what? Not bad. Not bad at all. I think the battery's dying on this, definitely.
that's pony on acid. That's actually a little bit better of a pairing. Well, Paul, thank you very much. I mean, I appreciate the vape tricks. I don't love it. I'm going to save this can though. I'm going to put this can, you know, on the shelf there. I'm going to save that can from Paul because that's just kind of a can I feel like I have to own. I just have to keep it. You know, everybody in my life knows me as like the vape guy, the vape guy, everybody. I'm the vape guy. Oh, the vape guy. I feel like I have to have the vape tricks, uh, the vape tricks beer. So real quickly, before I get into what I've been vaping, let's do a quick, uh, let's do some of these here super chats. Let's see streamed. If you're going to play the super chats bumper. Yes. But that's all you get. Matt Sinister. Very, very gracious of you. I'm not in quarantine. I work in a hospital. I need your advice, Nick. Should I accept a new job making 4000 making $4 less an hour to get away from Club Graveyard. Oh my gosh. Maybe, Matt Sinister, maybe. Here's the thing. I've done that. I've done that. Wait, I have the wrong studio lighting in here? This is unbelievable. This is unacceptable. Unacceptable. I just realized that. Here we go. That's the correct vlog lighting. Okay. <laughs> I've done that. I took a $2 an hour pay decrease to get off of graveyard shift. Uh, it didn't last very long. It was only a few months and then boom, I was back on graveyard shift. It depends on how long you've been on graveyard shift. Oh. I give it, I feel like if you've been on graveyard shift longer than a few years, younger than like five years, Yes, your body needs a rest. You're just going to put yourself in an early grave. Not sleeping, messing with your circadian rhythms like that. It's not a good thing. So I, I might take a pay decrease in order to get away from Club Graveyard, Matt. I might do it. But thank you, my man. Uh, Omega, gracious of you. Thanks for making my social distancing easier. Yeah, that's what this is about. Social distancing. We're all social distancing. But look. We all get to hang out together. It's like a damn Thursday slumber party. And we, we just hang out. You want to you guys want to watch a movie? I'll order pizza. We can get in some footy pajamas. We could vape. It'd be awesome. Adult slumber party, but social distancing. Appreciate that, Omega. The Voorhees files, hashtag muted. Yes, I appreciate that. Uh, a super chat isn't the fastest way to get my attention. Although, to be fair, yours was the first one I saw that did say muted when the fiasco was happening. I appreciate that, Voorhees files. British eyes. Want more green plastic watering can beer? I got you. Yes. British eyes? Yes. I'll answer you right now. Yes. <laughs> Please. I would like some. It was really, really very good beer. I mean, really very good. Chunky Poos? <laughs> Ch <laughs> good Lord, Chunky Poo Slide. Uh, Florida Man will not give up. Hell yeah, Chunky Poo Slide. I appreciate you, bro. Michelle Lynn. John. John? <laughs> John. And a John to you as well, Michelle Lynn. Real Jim Shady. Uh, turning into a... Turning into a blog while I'm roasting coffee. Oh, tuning into the blog while I'm roasting coffee. Can you send? Can I send it to you for review? I'd love to get your experienced opinion on it. Hell yeah, Jim Shady. I'll cup your I'll cup your coffee, bro. Send me some of your roasted coffee. How how dark are you roasting it? You taking it out to like an eighteen? Huh? <laughs> Not a lot of no. Eighteen is too dark. Don't roast it that dark. I would really really like to try your coffee. One hundred percent. If someone that follows me is a, is roasting coffee, then we're already friends. A hundred percent, we're already friends. Eight thousand percent. There's more things that make us friends right now, real Jim Shady, than don't. Jake, very gracious of you. Uh, how's that's how we get ants? Wash the can. Oh, okay, yeah. Jake makes a good point. I'll probably wash the can, but I'm gonna leave it up there for now. You know, we're not gonna get any ants right now. It's cold outside and it's March. I just feel like maybe we're not going to get any ants at this particular uh, at this particular moment. But I will wash it. That is kind of gross. Now that I'm thinking about it, I just kind of put that can up there and there's like sticky, syrupy red beer at the bottom. 
It's not great. It's not great. As I drink it, I hate it less. Ruby Roo, this is a beer that I legitimately want you to taste. I want you to taste it and tell me if I'm crazy, if you taste vinegar or anything in this. Well, anyway, now that we got those super chats done, uh, just real quickly, wanted to talk about a few things I've been vaping. Uh, I uploaded a video earlier this week about trying to find a regulated mod for my Atmazoo tripod RTA. And believe it or not, after all of that, after all of that, I still didn't put it on this Asmodus Minikin 2 because this Asmodus Minikin 2 constantly, constantly, and I've forgotten about this, maybe that's why it was in the box to begin with, constantly, constantly, constantly jumps resistance all over the place. It started doing it with the tripod, it, and it wasn't slight jumps in resistance. Like if a board's being extra accurate, sure. If there's a slight jump, if you're like bouncing back and forth between a 0.2 and a 0.23 or 0.2 and a 0.25 or something like that, sure, that's a thing, right? That's a thing. Do I think 22 millimeters or RDAs are gone and extinct? No, no, never, never, never. Constantly re re misreading the resistance and it would jump from like 0.2 to like 0.5 back down to 0.2 to a 0.6. Sometimes it was jumping as high as one ohm and higher. So after all of that, my Atmazoo tripod ended up on my Axis Vapes M17. Just felt good, just felt right to me, not sure why. I got this Axis Vapes M17 back out. This is the number 666 that I bought. Uh, I can't remember his name, I just saw him on Instagram though, he sold me this. And it's awesome and I love it and it's that good old DNA, <sighs> Atmazoo tripod, <sighs> crisp on the inside, crisp 461 on the inside. It's just such a nice, like relaxing, really flavorful, flavorful vape. Anyway, been rocking that uh, sufficiently. Also, uh, my my one of one Hexome uh, Goat, that is a Goat Hexome, that's a blue recoil RDA, Palmer's Powders on top, loving it. I've been vaping this DIY liquid from one of my patrons, Sifu. Mr. Sifu Mustache, Yo Yo Etuya. It's called Peach Among Worlds. And it's great. It's been awesome. I've really, really been enjoying it. It's like a peachy, cobblery kind of thing. Uh, I got a 120, been vaping it. Awesome. I guess I don't have to vape. Do I usually vape everything after I announce what it is? Do I not even remember how to do this? Do I not even remember what a vape buffet is? Except I've never called it a vape buffet. I just wanna vape this, okay? Maybe I won't vape the rest of them. Maybe I will. It's my vlog. Excellent. I really, really love that liquid. Um, nothing really exciting. It's a Proton Mini with a, uh, a Falcon 2, Horizon Tech Falcon 2 tank on top. It's filled up with Pony on Acid and it's filled up with Pony on Acid now. And this is just a fun game that I've been playing during quarantine with my sub ohm tank, with this Falcon 2. This has been through four different liquids all on the same coil head. All I do is I'll vape a juice and vape a juice and vape a juice and I'll vape it until it's as dry as I can possibly get it in there. You know, maybe some residual along the bottom. It's this game I like to play. Put a brand new liquid on top of it and then you kind of see how long it takes to change over till you get the full flavor of your new liquid. Then you vape that liquid in it and that liquid in it and then when it gets low, completely new flavor. I've gone through four different flavors and now this just still tastes like just pony on acid, which is kind of amazing that coil heads can do that. Coil heads have come such a long way. They have the ability to do that and actually do it pretty well. Back in the day, you wouldn't have been able to do that. You wouldn't have been able to switch flavors like that and, and be able to have it switch real quick and go from one flavor to the other. I think that's just cool. So right now it's pony on acid, but it's been four other things in the past. But like I said, the battery's dying. Um, I'm gonna cover up my RTA, but the type two RTA is on top here. Well, I guess I could show it to you a little bit. There's not much to give away. That's not the drip tip, but don't look at it. Orange Minikin. I dug this out in that video I did last week and it has not left the rotation. 
I've just been loving it because I'm a person that finger, button, this is my perfect palm size, two 18650s, clicky fire button right there. I love this fire button because it's like concave, like your finger can just rest in this little ditch, just in this little little ditch. It's like a little a little serving plate <laughs> just for your finger, just a little bowl, like a little bowl just for your finger to sit in. Love it. This is the grapefruit liquid. So this is the grapefruit liquid from from Squeezed. I think this company's based out of uh, California, Los Angeles. Is my ISO too hot? My ISO looks a little bit hot there. I'm gonna adjust that. But this is a grapefruit menthol and it's really cold. It's almost a little bit too cold. When I let my wife Casey vape this, she called this juice a nightmare. She's like, that's a, that's a nightmare liquid. I was like, really? Nightmare liquid? To me, it tastes like grapefruit. It honestly tastes a little bit like prickly smooth if they put just a whole fuck ton of like culotta and menthol in it. It's just very, very cooling. Like not painfully cooling, but you'll notice it every single time. You'll, you'll notice it. Menthol, menthol, menthol. If you need something, like occasionally I need something that's just cooling, just to kind of break it up, you know, your palate a little bit. Give it a shot, maybe worth a shot. And the flavor, you guys, I'm hyping up my own RTA. The flavor is bangin' 9,000 in that RTA. Bangin' 9,000. And then lastly, this has been a setup since last week. This is the top side uh, light um, in non-squonk mode and just in single battery mode. That is the gear RTA on top and it is filled up with the freaking Tokyo green bean. Freaking Tokyo green bean from last week. It grew on me and grew on me and then I took it out to have Casey taste it and she did that thing when she likes a juice she'll do this like hmm, face it's exactly what she does she does it every time if it's a juice she likes she goes hmm, like that hmm. so she did this face she goes hmm. I'm like what you like this she goes yeah I'm like you like it she's like it tastes like cornflakes with like almond milk and I was like cornflakes with almond milk give me it's like like give me that. And so I taste it. I'm like, kind of does taste like cornflakes and almond milk a little bit. In fact, if I can forget in my head that this is a flavor called Tokyo green bean, this could be in a bottle called cornflakes and almond milk. And you wouldn't know the difference. Your brain wouldn't be able to tell the difference. It kind of does taste like cornflakes and almond milk. It's a little bit weird. It kind of tastes like cornflakes and almond milk. It's really bizarre. Casey, yeah, you're, she's here. Look, she's admitting it. I like it. I like it. But that is actually all that I have been vaping. There's a Cali burn floating around here somewhere, but that's, uh, that's pretty much it. That's pretty much all I've been vaping. Not terribly exciting, nothing terribly new. I mean, Hexome, years old, right? <laughs> years old. Maybe the newest thing that I'm vaping, well, the newest thing I'm vaping is my RTA because it's not even out yet. Ha <laughs> ha, ding ding, nudge nudge, ha <laughs> ha, coming out soon, yeah, see? I guess that would be the newest thing, but I like going back and finding old shit that I love. There's so much good vape gear that just got glossed over so quickly because so many people were just, me, myself included, next best thing, give it to me. When's the next one? When's the next one? New products, new RTAs, yeah. And then it's this one RTA, it's like, well, it was really a banger, but it was really only popular for like a month and a half till, the, till you know another RTA came out. Delicioso. So I guess uh, before we do mail, let's do uh, let's do the, let's do some more super chats that were here. Uh, here, you want the bumper again? You want the whole bumper or really just a sliver? I vote for just a sliver. Oh, I won. Sliver. So here we go. Uh, Jake, 
Yeah, that's how we get ants. Yes. Uh, wash that can. Yes, I will. Thank you, Jake, for... Thank you, Jake, for keeping me hygienic, I guess, more than anything else. Uh, another one from Jake. Didn't get the Archer reference. I did. I did. Do you want ants? Because this is how you get ants. I got the Archer reference. I just read it incorrectly. If I had read it correctly the first time, I would have got it right away. But my brain, not so much. Uh, Josh, very gracious. Heavy. Can I get a shout out for my mom, Lisa M.? Uh, we love you, bro. Absolutely. Josh and Lisa M. 100% shout it out. Shout it out 9,000. Josh, bump that fist, man. Rick, very gracious of you. God, I'm drunk and the vlog. Yeah, you are. Welcome. That makes it better. That makes me much more entertaining, much more tolerable. It's why I drink beer first thing in the vlog. Like, how am I going to get through this? Guy with a beer. Appreciate that. Uh, uh, Lum, Lumka three, very gracious of you. Uh, shout out to my lovely country, Lithuania. Absolutely. We're, we're going to shout out the entire country of Lithuania. Let them all know, send out a text message or whatever. Let Lithuania know that they're getting shouted out tonight. The entire country of Lithuania, absolutely. Stands here. Keep killing the quarantine game, Brosif. Yeah. Killing the quarantine game. I don't know if I don't know if there's a quarantine game and I don't know if I'm killing it, but I, I appreciate that, Stan. I appreciate that. Well, uh, I, I do have, like I said, a little bit of mail. So look, we might as well jump into it. Let's do some freaking mail. Sorry, my shoe came untied. These shoes never come untied. And then it's like, oh, you're streaming? Well, we're not staying tied, mother trucker. So like I said, I got some mail. I got two packages from China. On a scale of one to very, how worried should I be? Two packages from China, directly from China. I feel like I'll be fine, you know? I feel like it's whatever. I feel like it's not a big deal right now. I'm gonna wash my hands after this, obviously. Obviously, there's gonna be a, a hand washing break that's gonna happen after this vape mail. What is you? Oh, shit! Okay, these might not look that exciting, but these are very, very cool. I'm not sure, I'm not sure if anybody has uh, heard from Coil Master recently, but apparently they're still a company. They're still kicking around and they're still releasing some stuff. And what they have sent over are rebuild kits for coil heads for sub-ohm tanks and pods. I'm going to try to sort through and see which one is which. God, the writing is so freaking tiny. So this is for the Vinci. This is the RBK for the Vinci. This is for the Vinci. Caliburn. Caliburn. Rebuild your Caliburn coil heads with this coil master. RPM. I don't know what that is. RPM. I don't know what that is. And Geek Vape Boost. I don't know what that is. But this one, out of all of them, this one is the one that I'm excited about. Rebuild your Caliburn coil heads. I think that's kind of incredible. It depend, depending on like, I know, don't touch my face before washing my hands. Depending on how, depending on how hard or how he, easy this is, I think this is going to be very cool. I've... I've been a Caliburn person. I've been using my Caliburn a lot. Ah! Sorry. 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 I've been using my Caliburn a lot, 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 lot. And I love the idea of being able to rebuild those coil heads and have them, I mean, assuming that you can rebuild them and they perform similarly to a stock Caliburn coil head. Uh, when was the last time I had my vision tested? I shouldn't need to remove my glasses. Uh, yeah, I know. Uh, it's been a few years. 
I need to get my vision tested again. Uh, in order to see up close, I just, I have to take my glasses off to see up close. I can read with my glasses off, but to see far away, I need glasses. So that's just, that's just whatever. Now, see, I already know what's in here. I just want to open it because I think it's cool and I'm kind of excited about it and I kind of want to show it off. I don't know if you guys are hip to, uh, hang on, let me show you. Yeah. I don't know if any of you are hip to, uh, oh good. It's the one with blue on the cover. That's weird. I don't know if you guys are hip to Vape Around Magazine, but this particular issue, the really exciting issue with blue on the cover, a weird flex though, isn't that? That's a weird, that's a weird, that's a weird cover, but contained in the pages of this magazine. It's a little thing on Grim Green, and I think that's cool. They did a little thingy on uh, on Turk, too, and it's very cool. I don't remember where, yeah, see, here's Turk. Look at that, friggin' Turk. Boom, Hobbyist Corner, M. Turk. An interview with Turk, look at that. Turk and his jar of coils. I thought that was very fucking cool. Stoked on that. Stoked on this. Yeah, look at that. Photo by Vapix. Thank you, Vapix. What does that quote say? In December 2014, I finally quit my job and gave this YouTube thing a real try. It was the best decision I've ever made. And that is true. So, if you have access to Vape Around Magazine, you can uh, read a little interview of me and Turk as well. And I'm, you know what? I'm sure the rest of it is a great magazine as well. You know, I haven't uh, read Vapor Magazine in quite some time. Seems a little ad heavy, but what magazine isn't these days, you know? You know, I just don't, who reads? I don't have time to read magazines anymore. I bring my phone to the bathroom, like, it's weird. Anyway, Vape Brown Magazine. Thank you for the interview. Thank you for having me and Turk in. I think that was uh, I think that was very cool. Very clutch move there. Stupid fuckers staying inside. Oh, all right. Are we getting rid of people still? All right. I'm gonna need to wash my hands soon. This is the. This is it. This is the last box. This is the the box. The last and only box. Let's see what's inside. It looks orange, so I'm guessing it's a geek vape, maybe. Maybe. Oh, look at that. I'll be damned. Well, I'll be damned. It's an Aegis pod. I don't know. What do you think? It looks kind of slick. I mean, we all knew that everybody was going to start making pods eventually, right? Like just everybody pods. Everybody, everybody pods. Let's just see what it looks like. You know, Geek Vape's been around a while. They should be able to they should be able to drop a banger of a pod. I wish they didn't call it the Aegis Pod though. The Aegis is kind of that brand that is, you know, durability, you know, durability, rough and rugged. Oh, I guess this kind of has that. It's way bigger. Way bigger. Dude, there's probably already videos out there for this, but that's what they show you on the front. And then the mod, it's the thing itself is big. I guess it's like at this like, make it look slimmer than it is angle because it's kind of a honker. It does have a very fancy yellow stripe. It kind of looks like a key fob for like a, I don't know, a Jeep. <laughs> a Jeep, some sort of uh, Maserati, no got the leather on there it's got the cushy leather push oh that's how the pod releases there's a little coil head for the inside i don't know Aegis pod right i'll give it i'll give it a whirl i'll give it a try see how it goes look i like pods and i got time on my hands to try new pods and with that said that, my friends, represents the end 
of the mail segment. So what should I do now besides go wash my hands? I'm serious about that. By the way, I am going to go wash my hands, which means here, I'm just going to leave you with some hold music right now. You can uh, look at my office. I'm going to, I'm literally going to go wash my hands. Not joking. Why not? Better safe than sorry. Wash your damn hands. touch your face. Okay. Whew. Now that my hands smell like Christmas. What the, so the soap that we have in our kitchen uh, was a gift and by, from one of our friends and it's a, a pine. It's like a Christmas pine scented soap. So whatever we're using it. And so now my hands just constantly smell like Christmas every time I wash them. What are you going to do? I don't know. Very little it would seem. Okay, I'm gonna move these over here. Now, well, damn it. What do we do now, my friends? Let's do some, uh, what time is it? Oh, it's 5.13? Okay, well, we got some time. Let's do some <sighs> super chats. <laughs> we'll even let the whole bumper play this time. Um, uh, yeah, so I'm going to do a few of these super chats. Remember at the end of every segment, I'm sticking to it. I'm stick every end of every segment, picking back up again here with rage and vapor. Very gracious of you, my man. Uh, yo, yo, Nick, hope this helps with yours and Casey's Netflix bill, uh, to continue watching tiger King, <laughs> stay safe and stay cloudy in quarantine. Wash your face. Don't touch your hands. Exactly. Wash your face. Don't touch your hands. Wash your hands. Don't touch your face. <laughs> Wash your face. Don't touch your hands. Um, Tiger King. You guys. Tiger King. Tiger King. Tiger King. Tiger King. Everybody should be watching Tiger King. If you haven't watched it, watch it. And if you've watched it, watch it again. That's We might talk about Tiger King on Wildcard Wednesday. Like, I'm not even joking. Tiger King. It's the best thing that you'll ever see. Um, chasing the clouds and flavor reviews. Very gracious of you. I just did the hugs vape thesis RD thesis RDA and it's epic. I have never heard of either of those chasing clades and flavor reviews. It sounds like I'm going to have to subscribe to you if I want to keep up on new vape gear because I have heard of neither of those, but I will definitely check out your video matching carpet. Coconut water tastes like water that's already been in someone else's mouth. <laughs> By the way, my name's not Josh. I know. I'm sorry, Matching Carpet. There was some confusion on my part a few vlogs ago during the retro vaping when I was using that little Enjoy guy. I was saying it came from someone named Josh. It didn't come from Josh. It came from Matching Carpet, whose real name is... I can't remember. I just DM'd you on Patreon. Matching carpet. That's who it came from. He gets credit for that particular retro vape. 1965 Sparkle. How have you been? Uh, tell my wife, Sam, that you're eating vegan. Tell my wife, Sam, that you're, tell my wife, Sam, that you're eating vegan. I'm eating vegan. I mean, I, I have been eating vegan. I had some beef today because that's all there is. <laughs> we can't get what we normally get. We had to get some beef. So I ate some beef. But I've really, really enjoyed eating vegan. Really very much enjoyed it. 
even gave up sour cream, which was a hard thing for me. Sour cream was the hardest thing I've ever had to give up in my life. Sifu, uh, you don't know how much you liking my liquid has lifted my spirits this week. Thank you so much. Oh, absolutely, Sifu. Absolutely. I hope your spirits are lifted. Anytime you need some spirit lifting, hit me up. I'll, I'll do the best I can to lift them for you, Sifu. They're really good. Peach Among Worlds rocks. Uh, cooking with Kirby. Stay safe, brother. Keep them hands clean. I washed them, and now they smell like Christmas. Keeping the hands clean. Uh, fuck pods, chase clouds. <laughs> Love RDAs. Yeah, you know, I was going to put that on a t-shirt for a while. Fuck pods, chase clouds. But I don't know. Ultimately, I decided it might be weird. People might, I don't know. I just don't want to cause more division. You know what I mean? There's so much division already in the vape world and all over the country and all over the world. I don't think we need more more, it's not just more division, it's like more specific division. Pods versus RDAs, you know. But it would be a pretty funny shirt. Damn it, I might have to do it. Uh, for British eyes, very gracious of you, Uncage Joe Exotic. No, no. Cage Joe Exotic. Cage him. <laughs> we are better off as a society. Just kidding. Tracy Kennedy, very gracious of you. You didn't say anything, but here, I'm giving you a shout out right there. Bump that fist. Onuk Renob, very gracious of you. Tripod with Steam Turner's tank and EH Pro 11 18350. EH Pro 101 18350. Dude, that, see, that sounds rad. That sounds awesome. That sounds like a great vape. I'm enjoying it. I'm enjoying it on my Axis Vapes M17. After this, after this tank full of liquid, I think I'm going to switch it to mouth to lung mode because everyone keeps telling me, oh, the, the tripod is the best mouth to lung. It's great. It's so good mouth to lung. I'm really enjoying the restricted lungness of it. How do you not enjoy it? It's just delicious. Just delicious. But I am going to switch it over to... Uh, I'm going to switch it over to mouth to lung there. Finally, Ethan, uh, loving the quarantine live streams. Uh, if you had to make a five song playlist to listen to for a whole year, what songs would be on that list? Cheers. Where were you yesterday, Ethan? We did an ask me anything yesterday on wildcard Wednesday, and I was sorely lacking some questions. A five song playlist. I, I, I don't know. I don't know. Only five songs? Only five songs? Wh what would you even choose? I mean, good Lord. You'd have to pick five songs that span like every genre you'd ever want to listen to. Like you'd have to pick a metal song and a punk song and a hardcore song, pop song, country song. No, maybe not a country song. I don't know. That's way too hard of a question. Ethan. I feel like I do owe you an answer, though. Let me think about it, okay? Let me think about it. I'll get back to you, Ethan. Five songs to listen to for a whole year? Man, that is just a curveball out of left field. My brain was not going down that path at all. I'm shifting into, like, news and advocacy mode. I'm thinking, all right, we're going to talk about Jerome Adams now. And then uh, along comes Ethan, who's like, oh, by the way, if you had to make a five-song playlist that you could, you could only listen to for one entire year, what five songs would be on that? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. I can't even think of five songs that I like off the top of my head right now. <laughs> That's I'll get back to you, Ethan. I appreciate that though, Ethan. That was awesome. Right out of left field. Right out of left field. Wow, 800% right out of left field. So what we're going to do right now is uh, switch gears a little bit. I would like to talk about Jerome Adams. I would like to talk about Governor Gretchen Whitmer just a little bit. So let's roll that quick little news bumper. I guess the first thing we should play again is, look, COVID-19, everybody's going crazy, right? Governors are scrambling like crazy. And I just don't want Kumo. Cuomo, Governor Cuomo, to forget that he said this. Vaping is better than smoking. Technically, yes. But so what? <laughs> but so what? Is vaping better than smoking? 
technically yes, but so what? I feel like we can't let him forget that he said that. He was talking about public health. He was talking about helping improve the quality of lives of smokers. Then he just said, so what? So what? And now he's very concerned, very concerned about this. It's so concerned, in fact, that we're just going to close vape shops. They're not exempt. Vape shops are not exempt from quarantine closures. Vape shops should be exempt from quarantine closures. I don't have any news necessarily on this, but vape shops should be exempt from quarantine. I think this is something that we really need to be like driving home on Twitter hard, Facebook hard, and outside of our vape groups on, in the general public. We need to be talking about this. Vape shops should be exempt. It's ridiculous to think that someone who's a vapor doesn't need access to vapor products during a quarantine, but we'll have cigarettes freely available, widely freely available in every gas station that's open and every convenience store that's open and every gas station, I already said gas station, every grocery store that's open. In fact, I don't have a link to it right now. I'll try to track down a link and put it in the description of this video, but uh, Alex Norcia over there for Vice did a, did a great article on this very subject, talking about vape bans, but leaving regular combustible tobacco cigarettes freely available for sale during coronavirus, during a pandemic of a virus that affects your upper respiratory system, definitely leaves cigarettes freely and widely available. Yes, absolutely. You should be doing that. And so now what we're running into now what we're running into is people like Jerome Adams and Governor Gretchen Whitmer making these real loose correlations between oh vaping oh covid we knew this was going to happen I mean, as soon as, as the lung injuries were going on and as soon as we start hearing about COVID, my literally my first thought was, oh, they're going to definitely, definitely try to lump these two things together. There's going to be coming out of the woodwork people that are going to start linking vaping less harmful vapor products, legal nicotine vapor products with an increased risk of COVID. And it's kind of already happening. It's barely, barely just starting now. I'm going to post a link in the description as well as in the chat to a Vaping 360 article that is, albeit very long, but very, very well done. Jim McDonald over there, Vaping with, vaping with 360. Vaping 360. I wanted to say Vaping with four tw Twisted 420. That's just where my brain went. Vape in 360 did a great job. Coronavirus and vaping, fear, confusion, disinformation, and lies. And he, and he calls attention to the Surgeon General talking about on March 6th. Do I have a picture of this? Damn it. I don't have a picture of it. March 6th on Twitter from the cabin of an airplane. I'm not worried about COVID. See, here's the problem with Jerome Adams. The Surgeon General doesn't really have that much power or any real power at all. They're really just a public sort of, I would call it figurehead. They don't make any real decisions. They're meant to, like Jerome Adams has done in the past, take pictures with kids, tweet about Kylie Jenner. Surgeon General doesn't have any real responsibilities and power like that. And so now what we get is besides Jerome Adams talking about on March 6th, I'm not worried about COVID. What the fuck is wrong with you? He's just a, I can't think of any other way to describe him than like a Trump puppet. His entire COVID-19, you know, stages, you can see it going along, just mirrored that of Trump's. I just posted a great video on Twitter, but it shows giving the dates of what Trump said when about the virus when. And the Surgeon General Jerome Adams is just a puppet to him every single time. Really early on, nope, I'm not worried. 
I'm more worried about the flu. That's what it says. I'm not worried about COVID-19. I'm more worried about the flu and the guy reclining all the way back to me in the seat before takeoff. (laughs) Okay, doctor of America, not worried about COVID-19. He's just a, yeah, Angela Garrity, public puppet. It's just a public little puppet. And Trump's Trump's messaging really early on was the same exact thing. Uh, no big deal. We got this. It's not going to spread to the United States. I cut off I cut off travel to China. I cut off travel. And then a few days later, Trump gets a little bit more concerned. Right after he called it a hoax, which he did. It was at a rally. It's on video. Coronavirus. You heard about this? Coronavirus. The latest hoax. He called it a hoax. Jerome Adams, not even concerned about it. And then as Trump's like, you know, concern started growing over the course of like two or three weeks, he he, is concerned. Jerome Adams changed as well. Like, well, now we, now we might be a little bit worried about COVID. Let's you guys, let's practice social distancing and wash your hands. I know I said I wasn't worried about COVID. I know I uh, deleted that tweet saying that I wasn't worried about COVID. But now let's maybe be a little bit concerned about it. Just a little little bit concerned about it. Did you see the video Jay Hayes did about the guy who ties a strange correlation? Uh, I, I did not see that, Josh. I didn't see that. I didn't see that. But what I did see was this. This is what I did see. I saw Jerome Adams on uh, the Today Show. On the Today Show. And I want you to watch this. And look, we're going to be making a lot of fun of Jerome Adams. And I don't mean, I'm not, I'm, I hate the way he talks. I just hate the way he talks. And this isn't like a thing. Like it's not because of his lisp. He just speaks poorly. Maybe he's just nervous being on TV, but he's overly nervous being on TV. Pay attention to like his, his, you know, his body motions and like his facial expressions and how dry his mouth is. His mouth just sounds like just paste, just pasty white dryness. And he's like vaping. Even when he says the word vaping, he sounds a little bit like hesitant. It honestly sounds like he's lying. I mean, I'm not going to call the guy a liar, except he is lying. And I think he's lying in this clip. What do you, what say you, Jerome? Are young people more at risk than previously thought? Well, so far, the demography definitely seems to be very different uh, in the United States versus in other countries that saw this hit earlier. And we're looking into that. There are theories that it could be because we know we have a higher proportion of people in the United States and also in Italy who vape. Um, We don't know if that's the only cause, but it's important for young people to know you can get this disease. You can be hospitalized from this disease. You can die from this disease. But most importantly, you can spread it to your loved ones. And so we need you to really. Don't know. Well, we don't know. We don't know if that's the only thing in play. But the United States has a disproportionate amount of vapors, which wrong. The United States and Italy have a disproportionate amount of vapors. Wrong. Maybe this is a factor in our young people contributing to our young people getting covid is vaping. Yeah, he said that based on nothing, literally nothing. There's, there's nothing. There's nothing to show that. There's no evidence that shows that. There's no evidence that suggests that. Looking over to the Australian Tobacco Harm Reduction Association, I'll put a link to this in the description as well as in the chat right now. But right at the top of this, it says no evidence that vaping increases the risk of COVID-19. And not a lot of people are talking about it. The risk from passive vaping. Vaping is no more likely to spread COVID-19 than normal breathing unless the vapor coughs or sneezes. There's literally one person in the public arena who is kind of addressing this, uh, Neil Benowitz from uh, UCSF. He's basically... He's, he's basically the only one saying anything about vaping and covid if posed the question, does, does vaping increase the chance of like spreading COVID or contracting COVID? He just basically uses common sense and says, well, no, unless the vapor is coughing or sneezing as they're exhaling your, their vapor on you, you know, kind of like if any normal person coughed or sneezed on you, then 
yeah, there you'd be in an increased chance. Vaping has literally nothing to do with it. There's nothing, nothing, no evidence, no nothing linking anything with vaping to anything with COVID, making it worse or making it anything other than just what it is. And the fact that they're even talking about, here, I have another clip. I got another clip. Hang on, we'll get to that clip in a second. This Australian tobacco harm reduction article talks about, look, is there risk for vapors for COVID? Sure. There's a risk for everybody for COVID. Is there more risk for vapors with COVID? An argument could be made that there's more risk for vapors for COVID, but I'm going to be rational about this. Vapors are predominantly ex-smokers. So depending on how long someone smoked tobacco, you know, combustible tobacco cigarettes in their life, they could have possible residual lung damage, lung issues. Sure. Sure. Uh, Possibly. I mean, it's a stretch, but maybe there could be some residual lung injuries or something happening in there. They could have damage from years and years of smoking before they switch to vaping. But does that mean vaping causes or has anything to do with COVID? No. And it's, it's, it's little details like that. It's little nuances like that that's missing from this messaging. And it's not just missing from this messaging. It's missing from messaging just in general. This is something I've ranted about in the vlog. I can't even remember how many times. But... In today's world, people just want one answer. It's like good, bad, you know, safe, dangerous. Well, it's not, you know, there's some subtlety to this. You know, there's a little bit of nuance that needs to happen in this discussion. And you can't just say vaping and COVID. You can't. In the same way that you can't, that you can't say it does. You can't say it doesn't. You can't, you can't say either way. There's just no evidence to show either way. The Surgeon General just made that statement literally based on nothing, based on not even a question, nothing, less than nothing. He just made it up on the spot. Doctor of America, Jerome Adams. And so I was thinking, yeah, they're going to try to start pegging vaping and smoking or vaping and COVID together. They're going to keep mentioning it in the same sort of context. This is a thing that could get out of hand pretty quickly. And before we know it, we find ourselves on Twitter just constantly defending, you know, like we were with flavors and like we've been with harm reduction in general and like we've been, you know, with the science and the data and the RCP report and, you know, all of this stuff. We're going to have to be drilling home there's no link. There's no link. Come to baby. There's no link. This is something. And it's kind of already starting. That's the single scariest thing is that it's kind of already starting. And you know who it's starting with? Remember at the very beginning of Evoli, the vitamin E acetate lung injuries from the drug dealers contaminated THC carts. You remember the first governor in the Republic that called for a flavor ban when the lung injuries were happening? Oh yeah, (laughs) it's our good friend, Governor Gretchen Whitmer. What say you, Governor Gretchen Whitmer? The fact of the matter is in America, we are seeing severe consequences in our younger people in ways that they haven't seen in other parts of the world. And I've talked to more than one uh, physician who has observed and perhaps, you know, there's too little science to know precisely if this is what's going on, but vaping is a lot more popular in the United States than it is elsewhere. And that is compromises your respiratory system and makes you more susceptible to respiratory illness. And so this is a crisis that we are feeling in ways that other parts of the world hasn't even experienced. I, I mean... I mean, come on. (laughs) Seriously, 
Come on, Governor Gretchen Whitmer. Are you really going to be the first governor in the republic to just come charging out of the gate exactly like you did with a flavor ban during Evoli, only it turned out you were very, very wrong about that, and really you just cost the state a whole bunch of money and like tax revenue dollars and closed down a bunch of businesses, mine included, Governor Gretchen Whitmer. You want that on your on your record as well? You want to be the first, first one right out of the gate. First one right out of the gate. What did she say? I've talked to a scientist. And here, I did a little, I did a little edit to this. You guys want to hear Kumo again? No, I don't even want to look at him. Look at his face. I don't even want to look at his face. I did a little edit to the Gretchen Whitmer video. And I, you know, I think it's pretty good. I think it's uh, fair. I think it points out a lot of things that might, you know, just like I was saying, you know, nuances really to this discussion that needs to be happening. Uh, is Governor Gretchen Whitmer correct when she says that there is a disproportionate amount of young people affected by COVID-19 in the United States? No, she's wrong about that. That's, that, that was the first lie. That was the first lie. How many other lies can we catch her in? Let's just, uh, just a quick little edit of that same video. Um, what say you, Governor Gretchen Whitmer? The fact of the matter is in America, we are seeing severe consequences in our younger people. If I get corona, I get corona. At the end of the day, I'm not gonna let it stop me from partying. You know, I've been waiting. We've been waiting for Miami spring break for a while. In ways that they haven't seen in other parts of the world. This virus ain't that serious. We're here, I just turned 21 this year, so I'm here to party, get drunk before everything closes. And I've talked to more than one uh, physician who has observed and perhaps you know, there's too little science to know precisely if this is what's going on, but you know, there's too little science to know precisely if this is what's going on, but you know, there's too little science, 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 too little science. And it's not, look, really, Governor Gretchen Whitmer? Really? Maybe. Maybe young people are just stupid. Is that what we're, I think that's what we're learning right now. Between, between the youth vaping epidemic that it was, trust me guys, just ask Scott Gottlieb, it was a real epidemic. It was a real epidemic, bona fide, real epidemic. <laughs> real epidemic. Comparing the vaping epidemic to COVID, maybe kids are just dumb. Are these the same kids that were defending, you know, that were saving from flavored nicotine? Do any of the kids in that video, stupid kids in that video, look like they need saving from flavored nicotine? I mean, they're 21, they're considered young adults, you know. Vaping affects their brains. It can change, you know, like Jerome Adams says, nicotine, that 21-year-old girl who's like, I just turned 21 and I'm here to party. Nicotine, flavored nicotine could still, <laughs> could still change her brain and we need to protect them from nicotine. Or could it be Governor Gretchen Whitmer that the young people got infected with COVID-19 because they're fucking stupid and they went to Daytona Beach, Florida and they're not self-quarantining and they're just being irresponsible shits. And look, you, you could have COVID, you could be carrying it and have no symptoms and be perfectly fine. And then you go out in public and you start touching things and partying and doing things and wiping your hands and coughing on a wall. And then someone who doesn't have COVID, who might be immunocompromised, will touch that wall or that shopping cart or that whatever, and they'll contract it. That's how flattening the curve works. Governor Gretchen Whitmer, God damn it. You should just feel the most foolish that you've ever felt in your foolish life. First, it was vaping with Evoli when it was clearly vitamin E acetate contributing to the lung injuries and nothing to do with flavored nicotine products, but you felt the need to try to ban flavored nicotine products in the state anyway. And now you're making the correlation that vaping is somehow responsible for dumb youths getting COVID, which there aren't a disproportionate amount of youths 
contracting COVID in the United States. That's just straight up wrong. And there's no connection or correlation between vaping and COVID or the severity of it or the ability to contract it easier. The thing we have to remember, you guys, and I'm gonna to try to put as many links as I can down in the description uh, about everything that we're talking about today, but the one thing that you have to remember, and maybe it's just because Maybe it's just because I've been so jaded or, you know, over the months since September 11th, 2019, you just get, the more you get involved in the system and the more you try to affect the system, the more you just get jaded and the more you just get angry. I'm going to be putting a link in the description of this video, as well as in the chat to this video, to an article from Reason Magazine. And usually I save really good articles like this to read on Tuesday Bro Tuesday. We do a little story time with Grim Green. This article drives home so many points. And the thing we have to remember, as the title of this headline says, most politicians are disingenuous opportunists. The coronavirus outbreak only makes that more obvious politicians are going to use whatever means necessary to continue to push their agenda. And they will, and they have, and they just always will. And even during times like this, during COVID quarantine and lockdown, it's not going to keep Jerome Adams, who should be communicating effectively to the citizens of the United States of America about this, you know, pandemic going on, should be doing that instead is taking opportunities on the Today Show to just take jabs at vaping, still trying to push his misguided anti-vape agenda. And Governor Gretchen Whitmer's the same way, using this opportunity, she should be communic communicating to her state the same thing, clear, concise information about the quarantine pandemic going on right now instead of using this valuable time to continue to push her own anti-vaping agenda. They're going to continue to push their own agenda even now. And that is just disgusting. That is just disgusting to me. It's like this, uh, it's like the stimulus package, right? Have we still, have we not voted yet on a stimulus package? I think we voted on a $2 trillion stimulus package, and I don't remember whose stimulus package it was, but when I was reading about these stimulus packages, and which, by the way, this is the most I've ever uttered the phrase stimulus package possibly in my entire life. I don't want to say it anymore. But I'm reading about these stimulus packages, and you look at the one that, uh, you know, the Republicans wrote up, and you go, ah, really? That's a lot of corporate sort of bailouts and things like that, you guys. Um, not super on board with that. And then you read the ones that, that, that Nancy Pelosi tried to, tried to introduce as well. And it's like, what are you guys even trying to do? This is a stimulus package for the COVID-19 pandemic that's currently sweeping across the globe. But yes, we should definitely include an extra $35 million to fund a performing arts center in New York in the in the COVID-19 stimulus package bill. What? Every US citizen on earth should look at that and be like, what the, f do something. That's all I wanna say, do something. Can you guys stop fighting for 18 seconds trying to politicize every possible issue and using this time to $35 million for a performing arts center in New York. Oh, and we're also, we're going to keep taking shots at vaping. We're going to try to make people think that vaping and, co you know, we should be focusing on the lives of American citizens. But I think we can also do that and continue to scare them about vaping. It did pass, Michelle, in. Okay. I thought it, I thought so. I thought that's what I read today was that it passed. I thought that's what I read today that it passed. And you know what? Take the money, you guys. Take the money. I'm serious. I, everybody that can take it, take it. So here's the thing. Ray, you bring up a very good point in the chat when we're having this discussion about vaping and COVID and things like this. A lot of people, okay? This is, this is where I just, I'm gonna land on this. We need to not stop. We need to stop telling people that vaping can help 
antiviral or antibacterial. It, it doesn't work that way. It, it doesn't work the way that you think it does. It's not just vaping like, oh, killed all the, killed all the bacteria in my lungs. Huh, who knew? Yeah, vaping. Yeah, stop. You can't do that. You can't say that. It requires very specific conditions. It requires very specific like moisture and evaporation points. The room that you're in has to be a certain temperature. The propylene glycol fog or vapor has to be at like a certain temperature as well for like any antibacterial properties to even exist. They did this a long, long, long time ago in the 1940s in schools and classrooms as an antibacterial thing. It's not an argument that can really hold up. It's kind of a weak argument. It's kind of like the same argument as, well, eggplant has nicotine. Is eggplant going to be a tobacco product? The answer is no, because it has an order of magnitude less nicotine in it. Some, sure. Less, yes. Passed the Senate, not the House yet, not signed by Trump yet. I appreciate that, Ruby. Thank you for the information. Was that, I should have read up on this. I don't know which bill passed. I think it was the $2.2 trillion one. Was this a bipartisan one? Or was this the Dems with their new rules for emission requirements on airplanes to be shoehorned into the COVID-19? So really the, the big takeaway from this, and like I said, I'll be putting links all, all down there in the description, all down there in the description. But the big takeaway for this, at least in my opinion, is politicians are terrible and they will use events like this to continue to push their own agenda. And it's kind of scary. I want everybody safe. I don't want people getting COVID. I'm on board. I'm quarantined. I'm locked down. The market's going to try to adjust the best way that it possibly can. I believe we can get through this without ruining the economy and without killing off a few million U.S. citizens. I think we can get through it. And when we get through it, at the end, we have to hold the government accountable. They've been pushing their agenda, anti-vaping agenda, anti-privacy agendas, Green New Deal agendas. $35 million for a performing arts center, apparently. Thanks, Nancy Pelosi. If they were looking out, now, I hate saying that, like, if this, if that. You can if yourself into the ground. It doesn't change much. But if, if, I feel like if the federal government really cared, <laughs> think everything would have been different. We would be South Korea right now. We would have drive-through tests. We would, we, would already we would already be flattening the curve. Instead, we didn't. We got Donald Trump and Jerome Adams going, it's no big deal, it's no threat. I'm not worried about it. It's a hoax. Corona. China. China disease. Stop saying China disease. Jerome Adams, I have no trust left in our Surgeon General. I have, n I mean, zero trust left in our Surgeon General. I have very, very little trust left in things like the World Health Organization and the Centers for Disease Control. Because the reason that we're where we are right now, the reason why we're at the United States having the highest recorded cases of corona in the world now. Thank you, Centers for Disease Control. Maybe you shouldn't have wasted six months chasing a fake epidemic and scaring people away from vaping using vitamin E acetate lung injuries. Maybe, maybe, maybe. Anyway, uh, I think that's all I got. I don't want to rag on uh, Jerome Adams anymore. I would like to rag on Governor Gretchen Whitmer some more because she is just the worst, just the worst type of person. She hates vaping so much, so much so much that she's cool with people going back to cigarettes. And that makes me insane. So use common sense, be protected, wash your hands, don't touch your face. If you can stay home, stay home. If you can't, then please be as safe as you possibly can. Just please be as safe as you possibly can. In Los Angeles, <laughs> our numbers are going through the roof. We're, we're over a thousand confirmed cases in Los Angeles now thousand confirmed cases in Los Angeles now. 
shot up overnight. Same thing happened in Connecticut. Same thing happened in Louisiana. Louisiana cases shot up overnight. China virus. China virus. Uh, no, World Health Organization is not the U.S. government. Uh, it's, yes, it's the World Health Organization is truly and honestly mostly owned by China. China. That's why the World Health Organization continues to praise China, even though China was, you know, lying and covering everything up and uh, jailing the whistleblower who, who, who first got COVID-19, uh, you know, out into the mainstream. Despite all of that, the World Health Organization was like, dude, China's doing a pretty good job, you guys. Let's give them an award. World Health Organization, we are. China's doing a great job, don't you think? Oh, definitely. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. <sighs> yeah, Dr. Fauci is the only reasonable man in the room at, at any given moment. At any given moment. <laughs> at any given moment. Makes me insane. And, and Mike Pence, I can't stand Mike Pence. I, Mike Pence is the worst. Worst. Okay, enough about worst politicians. Let's get back to some fun stuff. That was news and advocacy. And really, I guess my takeaway from this, I think I've already said it, just be reasonable, be rational, be safe. Don't make things worse. We're going to be under a lot of attack. And people earlier, before COVID, people were talking about like, well, I wonder if vaping is still gonna be talked about. Like, is vaping gonna still be like national news headlines? Yeah, it is and it will continue to be through the election and after the election. It will continue to be a politicized thing long after COVID-19 has calmed down. We'll still be talking about vaping and flavors and youth vaping, which by the way, I've heard this mentioned a lot all over the place and I stole it and posted it on Twitter, but if all these kids are home for quarantine and there's still a youth vaping epidemic, I'm pretty sure we know exactly where the blame lies. People like Aaron Mills rallying against vaping while letting her son, underage son, vape. Yeah, there you go. Thank, appreciate that, Aaron Mills. The hypocrisy is just sort of oozing out of the screen. Every time I see Aaron Mills on Twitter, I'm like, oh, there's some of that hypocrisy kind of pouring out, pouring out your mouth. I don't know why I did that. So let's get back to some fun stuff, you guys. Um, we got about a half hour left in this here stream. What We might get to retro vaping. No, we might not get to retro vaping because I want to do getting to know Grim Green. Son of a bitch. We're going to get right now. It's time for my favorite part of the vlog. At least this vlog. I'm dying to try this liquid. It is time to taste... Sapbois, 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 sapbois. So <laughs> we got some sapbois and I am, we opened, I opened a bunch of wacky liquids from Beecher, from Indonesia. Last week we tasted that uh, Tokyo green bean, which as I said, is still going strong, shockingly strong, surprisingly strong. cornflakes and almond milk. And now, now we're going to get to some sop bua. And I have no idea what this could possibly taste like. I'm literally just basing this off of like the fruits I see on the front. I see two tiny little pineapples. So I'm figuring there might be some pineapple in here, right? Two little watermelons. So I'm thinking, well, shit, there might be some watermelons in here. One big honeydew. Honeydew, cream, I get the sneaking suspicion that this thing right here, you see that? I think this fruit is a papaya. I think that's a papaya and I hate papaya. I don't get along with papaya, especially I do not get along with papaya e-liquids. I don't get along with papaya the fruit. 
Look, I don't want, I, it's complicated. <laughs> I have a complicated relationship with fucking papayas, but I don't get along with papayas, the liquid or the fruit. So I'm hoping that the papaya isn't like too crazy, too crazy of a papaya. But let's open some sap bois. Mm. I know I just sounded like the crypt keeper right there. Wait, there's there's definitely menthol or culotta in this. Creamy melons, natural vanilla, cream. No, you guys never know that me. Uh, interesting. Still feel a little bit of the tingliness on my lips. Uh, what we're going to be tasting it out of tonight. Yeah, this is the Def Mods. Uh, I don't even know what I could name this. Ode to Lucifer. Just pentagrams and Satan stuff all over it and some grim green logos. Love this thing. It's just become my banger. Recoil RDA on top. Original recipe. Recoil RDA on top. I'm just going to saturate these coils. Saturate this caton. And then we're going to vape it. Sap bua. Sap bua. Does anybody speak Indonesian? What are they? What language is this? Indonesian? You know, in uh, New Guinea, Sumatra, they speak Indonesian. Does anybody speak Indonesian? Does anybody know what Sapbua means? Oh, vapors. Sapbua. 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 It's a fruit soup with sweetened condensed milk. Sapbua. Really light, light bearer? How you doing, Light Bear? Fruit soup. It's a fruit soup. Fruit soups with sweetened condensed milk. Fruit soup with sweetened condensed milk. All right, let me line up my air flows. Let me put a few uh, a few more dollop drops down here. Sop bua. Let's see. Uh, let me adjust my... Yeah, this should be fine. First inaugural toot. Ooh, I taste a little bit of like a sweet, creamy something happening there. First inaugural toot. Sop bua. <coughs> okay. Okay. Um, it's no big deal. It's just my wattage was a little bit high. I'm not used to that type of wattage. I'm, I'm not no big, no cloud chaser anymore. I like uh, cooler vapes. Okay. Whew. Wow. Loving that menthol. So uh, I'm going to do what I always do for every very random liquid tasting. And I'm just going to sit back with this just for a hot second and just vape it. I'll come back. We'll talk about it. So the first thing I'm going to do is this. It's happening on purpose this time. Nobody be alarmed.
There is so much menthol in this liquid. I can still taste it. And I vaped it like four or five times in a row. And then all I had to do was inhale just air, you know, oxygen into my mouth. And it like gave me a headache because it was so cold. Did anybody else see that happen? I hope not. So cold, freezing cold. So much menthol in this. It's like menthol, culotta. It does taste creamy. It does taste melony. Unfortunately, it does also taste papaya-y, papaya-ish. And to me, papaya kind of just kind of just tastes dirty. It tastes like dirty mold. Like dirty moldy something. It actually kind of tastes like okay, so does anybody remember um Maybe this was only me growing up, but around Halloween time, there were like big wax lips. You remember the big wax lips? And sometimes they had vampire fangs, but most of the time they were just big red wax lips. And then you could just bite them. And it was kind of like gross, weird wax flavor. That's kind of what this liquid tastes like. It kind of has some sweetness. The menthol is so strong. I can't really taste anything else, but that papaya that like dirty papaya kind of just like cuts right through it. My lips are blue. Shit. I mean, it's good. It's good if you like papaya. That's the only way I can put this. It's got, like I said, melon, pineapple. It's very tropical. It's very creamy with like that sweet and condensed milk sort of component going on in there. feels like a very cohesive flavor, but there is a strong papaya, which unfortunately just sticks in my craw. And I legitimately, I mean, look at this. Would, would you, were you expecting menthol in this? I see nothing that warmed me that there was going to be menthol in this. I, I, it's blue, I guess that could be menthol, but there's no way that I knew that there was menthol in this. And it's still cold, cold. I'm trying to warm up. I'm trying to get summer here quicker. I don't want cold, cold wind in my mouth, Ruby Roo. This was the Vegas wind you were looking for, Roo. This was it, cold wind in your mouth. It's just so mentally, mentally. Yeah. It just hits me in the throat mentally like crazy. So mentally. And that papaya, you know, see, it's like this vicious cycle. I vape it. And then when, even when I'm done vaping it, I can still inhale and it still is cold and it still gives me a headache. That is the weirdest I'm not about that papaya life. I can't do fruit soup. Maybe I can't do fruit soup. If this had no menthol in it, I'd be 8,000% into it. Or if it just had less menthol. Indonesian liquids are really, like the two that I've had so far, you know, with the exception of Bule Bolu, menthol. It's just been menthol overload. Anyway, I kind of like it. We'll see if it grows on me or not. It's just so mentholated. I can't get over it. I can't get around the mentholation. Cannot get around the mentholation. Well, sap bua, sap bua. Not, you know, not a not a glowing recommendation from sap bua, but if you ever find yourself shopping for Indonesian liquids and you want something with papaya and menthol, sap bua, bro, sap bua. You got a sucky beer and a sucky vape. That's just the way it is sometimes. You know what? You're right. I forgot to do the uh, super chats after. I forgot to do the super chats after the news and advocacy segment. So now that we've had a liquid taste, I'm going to leave this up here for now. This is the vape that I'm going to vape for the rest of the vlog. I want to get to know this Sapua a little bit more. I might need some more wattage on here too. Let's put it back up to 70. I thought that was too much, but...
It's growing on me. It's just so, I'm not going to say it again. It's just so menthol -y. It's just so menthol -y, you guys. It would be a much better summer vape when it's hot outside and you're in an oven and you just can't escape Sapabua to the rescue. Sapabua to the rescue. So since I missed all the super chats from there, let's do the super chats now. I don't have time for the whole bumper. Just don't, sorry, don't have, don't have time for the whole bumper. Uh, live in the, love in the, oh, Ethan. I already got you, Ethan. Uh, that's right. I still have to list five songs. Uh, Jatch Black saw this earlier, but my point, my job calling me essential means about as much as me telling a stripper, as a stripper telling me I'm her favorite. Yes. <laughs> Yes, that is 100% accurate. Means about as much as a stripper telling you, you're my favorite. Look, Jatch, you're essential. What, one of the things that I've noticed recently is a, a lot of my yo-yos, my patron cool kids, they're very essential workers. Everybody's at work. Everybody's working, essentially working. So thank you for working. Thank you for being an essential uh, worker, Zatch. Wesley, very gracious of you. I poop naked too. So what exactly? You know what? We need to get rid. <laughs> we need to get rid of the stigma around nude poops. Okay, I'm sick of living in fear of 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 of, of society. Society for wanting to poop naked. It's weird. I poop naked too. I don't poop naked. I actually don't. I really, really don't. It's just everybody thinks I does. Mr. Sinister, very gracious of you. Yo, yo, Jerome Adams. Another one you can add to the list when you smell the vinegar through the TV. <laughs> ah, that's awesome. Yeah, Governor Gretchen Whitmer and Jerome Adams. You can just smell <laughs> smell the vinegar through the TV. Nick, very gracious of you. I think vaping does make you more susceptible to COVID-19, but only from not disinfecting your device regularly. Hashtag death bait, hashtag so what, hashtag grim green 2020. I don't want the job, sir. Don't want the job. Yeah, sanitize. Obviously, you know, don't share. You know, that's one thing that they mentioned that Australian tobacco harm reduction article as well is, you know, maybe it could be spread from sharing jewels. Sure. Sharing jewels, sharing mods, just disinfect it. I don't, you know, I'm on quarantine, so I don't have to worry about stuff like that. I'm not sharing. We're not at a vape show and I don't have to share my mod with anybody. Thankfully, thank the maker I don't have to share my mod with anybody. Imagine sharing my mod with one of you greasy... I'm just kidding. <laughs> just kidding. I've shared my mod with so many people, with way too many people. So I think uh, I think what we're going to do right now, it's only 6.09. Do you think we have time to do a retro vape and a getting to know Grim Green? I think we do. Let's start off. Let's do a real quick, okay... We're gonna do a real quick getting to know Grim Green. So the getting to know Grim Green is, uh, I've just been going through my records and I wanna talk about some of the records that I have and then there's a little bit of a story behind every record and what it means to me. I've become a big fan of record collecting recently just because I've re-fallen in love with the idea of owning music, you know? owning it more than just, oh, I can stream the new whatever, do a leap a single, owning it, 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 owning it is kind of a different thing. So we're going to tell the story today behind this record right here and why I had to buy it a thousand percent. This is of course Kiss, double platinum, Kiss double platinum. So I, I was a, I was an obsessed Kiss fan. That's how I would describe my fandom with Kiss is I was obsessed with them for about a solid year of my life. Completely obsessed with Kiss. I learned everything I possibly could about Kiss. You know, I was one of those guys, you know, I was talking about this on the stream on Instagram on Tuesday where it's okay to, if you passively like stuff, you know. You don't have to know every band member in order to enjoy their music. You don't have to know every lyric in order to find their songs enjoyable. You know, it's okay to passively like stuff. 
I was not that way with Kiss. Kiss was not a passive, passing thing for me. I wanted to learn every lyric. I wanted to know every band member and what albums certain band members played on like throughout the career of the band. Like it's like, oh, Ace wasn't in the band for a while. Peter Chris wasn't in the band for a while. It's like, no, that guy was playing bass or we had Eric Singer on, you know, Eric Carr on, on drums at this one point. I, I was obsessed with Kiss and I just wanted everything I could of Kiss and in my room, and this was my first, you know, room as a youth growing up. I think I was 11 years old. I think it was that summer-ish time in between like sixth and seventh grade as was my kiss phase, I guess. I have not been staying hydrated, hydro homies. So pause and, and hydrate yourself. It was around that time I was like 11 years old and I had my first room and it's like, all right, I'm putting posters on my walls and I'm going to be a kid and I'm going to put stuff on my walls. And what I did on an entire wall of my room, floor to ceiling, the biggest wall in my room, floor to ceiling, all kiss, all kiss, posters, whatever I could possibly find that had to do with Kiss. I was buying every metal magazine I could possibly find that had any pictures of Kiss in it. Even flipping through like Rolling Stones, if there was like a little picture of Kiss, nope, I'd cut it out, that's going on the fucking wall. All I needed to do was like put in some thumbtacks and attach some red yarn to things and you could have walked in my room and think that I was planning a conspiracy plot to somehow assassinate Kiss. Like it looked like a crazy person, like beautiful mind wall of just Kiss posters, kiss everything, kiss the world, my life, just kiss, I needed it. And I love kiss. And when I first started thinking about vinyl and getting into the idea of buying like all my favorite records on vinyl, kiss is one of the first bands that comes to mind just because kiss is amazing. They're one of my top, you know, easily top five favorite bands of all time kiss. And so, yes, I would love to own the KISS catalog of records. But I also don't have like, you know, thousands of dollars to spend on all of the KISS records. So my first KISS record purchase is Double Platinum because this is, I mean, basically this was their greatest hits. This was their very first greatest hits. And the funniest thing about this particular record is this record was released exactly one year after I was born, which means 99.9% .9 of the music on this was all written, recorded, and performed before I was even born. And I, that's, I just really like that. I go, okay, I'm a 77, I'm a Gen Xer. This came out in 78. And this particular album, Double Platinum, it's not necessarily like the best recordings of these songs. They did some weird stuff. They remixed a few of the songs on here. Some of the songs are even like missing some like big chunks out of them. Just parts of the songs are missing. And then they re they didn't remaster it, but they remixed some of them, uh, you know, like Strutters. They remixed it and it became Strutter 78. Huge Kiss fan. I want to own all the Kiss albums, but I can't afford to buy all the Kiss albums, so I'm stuck with Double Platinum. So I can put this on. I can listen to Kiss. The whole records themselves all, they sound a little bit compressed overall when compared to like the original, original recordings. This is a re-release of the Double Platinum, by the way. This isn't in some sort of like original pressing like this isn't an impressive record these were mass produced and this was like you know the 19th million run of double platinum but it was the big opener so i think i think the songs look at that yeah kiss they're embossed on the back no this is not an original run Damn, this might be original Are they embossed or recessed? I can't quite tell. That's how you tell is the faces on the inside. It's all their faces. I can literally not tell. I can literally, literally not tell. So the two tracks on this album that everybody is your homework to listen to. I'm going to be adding them to the GTKGG playlist on Spotify, which I'll put a link to in the description of this video. The first song 
that everyone should listen to. Uh, and this is going to be, let's see, if I do Kiss albums in the future, we're just going to have to add more Kiss songs. That's fine. The first song that we're putting from Double Platinum on the Kiss on the Spotify playlist is Deuce. I mean, how do you not love the song Deuce? People are going to go to Love Gun. People are going to go to like Rock and Roll All Night. Look, those are great songs. Deuce is a banger of a Kiss song. In fact, when I was in the Swamp Donkey, we played a show where every band had to pick another band and and cover a bunch of their songs, you know? So it was like local bands and it's like, we're going to play a bunch of whatever, Metallica songs. We're going to play play a bunch of ACDC songs. We picked five Kiss songs to cover and Deuce was one of them. And we liked Deuce so much and we liked playing it so much that we just added it to our lineup and Deuce became our closer song at the end of every show we played we wrapped it up with Deuce. So Deuce, Deuce is the first song that's going on the playlist. Also Black Diamond. It's a little bit of like, I don't even want to say it's a deep cut because there's no Kiss deep cuts anymore. Everybody's listened to every Kiss song that's ever existed. Even like people that have like, oh, I got Gene Simmons fucking bootleg of him at a concert farting on his guitar. I burned it to a CD. That millions of people have already listened to it. Black Diamond. Black Diamond is another song that we attempted to cover, but it's a really hard song to play. Gene is a really good bass player, and I am not a really great bass player. I'm fine. I would describe my bass guitar skills as fine. It was just a really hard song to play, and the reason we couldn't do it live is because I couldn't play it. Okay, are you happy? I finally admitted it, Mark. I can't play Black Diamond, but it's a great, great, great Kiss song. I personally feel in the world there's very few rock bands, you know, with the exception of legendary bands. You know, you think about like Led Zeppelin, you know. Kiss is in that sort of upper echelon of untouchable, timeless incredible fucking rock bands. It's Kiss. It's double platinum. Someday I'll own the entire Kiss discography on vinyl. But for now, I'm going to have to settle for the compressed, remixed double platinum album. And it's fine. You know what? It's fine. It's fine. It's fine until I can get the rest of the Kiss album. So like I said, I'll have a link in the description to the Spotify playlist where we've talked about all of the records so far but I just love Kiss. I just love them. And I just think back to when I was in like sixth grade at that fever for Kiss. I felt like I was discovering, you know, Kiss had been around for, you know, whatever, 10 years at that point. Maybe not 10 years. Let's see, five years at that point. I felt like I was just discovering all of this stuff. Like I was the first person that had ever heard Kiss, you know? Like I'm covering, I'm hearing all these great songs. I'm like, does everybody know about Kiss? Like, I feel like I need to tell people about Kiss. You just discover this world of music. Swamp Donkey 2020. All right. (laughs) Swamp Donkey 2020. So there you go. A little bit of uh, getting to know Grim Green and my obsessive uh, sort of Kiss. Okay, you want to talk about Kiss versus Van Halen? We can talk about Kiss versus Van Halen all day long. I also, fast forward a couple of years, I'm going to call it ninth grade was when Van Halen just hit me in the face with their big distorted guitar dick. Just punk. Eddie Van Halen was like, hey, pound cake. And I was like, oh, Van Halen, I love you. I love you. And now I'm going to go buy all of your records because Van Halen. I wasn't quite as into Van Halen as I was into Kiss. Kiss was literally an obsession. Nothing in my life has really taken over like that. I mean, maybe, sure, you can consider Star Wars being an obsession that has taken over more than Kiss. But at that time, seriously, it was like Kiss everywhere in my room. All I listened to was Kiss, Kiss. I mean, I don't know if you guys have seen the Grim Army logo. Go take a look at the Grim Army logo. And you tell me I don't have an obsession with Kiss. So they're great, and I love them. And the last thing we're going to do, we got 10 minutes to retro vape. Do you think we can do it? I believe in us. Go. Well, Jeremy's Bogan, Claire, 
Pearl. I don't know why I just went into Pearl Jam. That was weird. We were talking about Kiss. Maybe I need to buy a Pearl Jam album. So, what we're going to be retro vaping today is something that has been sitting on my disc for quite disc desk. Been sitting on my desk for quite a while. I'm talking about the original, original Rip Trippers Pharaoh RTA. Sing of Tats. Pharaoh RTA. I used to really like this thing. This Pharaoh RTA, I believe, came out in 2017. 2017? And I really, really liked it. Single coil banger. This was the follow up to his other Pharaoh, what he called a drip tank. I forgot that I have to wick this. So, this is going to be a speed wicking session. Speed wicking. This was the follow up to his unfortunately named Pharaoh drip tank, which was really just a glorified, like a single coil dripper that had a slight little you know, juice reservoir kind of down at the bottom. It didn't really work the way it was intended to, but I don't know. I liked it. I thought it worked okay. I also just realized I haven't dried, uh, I haven't dry burned the coils on here. So that's something else we're going to need to do. Shit. What time is it? 622. I don't know if we're going to get through this. I don't know if we're going to get through this. We might, you might just be out of time. No, I'm just kidding. Wait, we have plenty of time. We have to glow these nice and glowy evenly. Perfect. I think these are some uh, Fiends framed staples in here, if I'm not mistaken. It's been forever since I've used this. What did the resistance come out to? 0.22, 3.8 volts, perfect. So I'm just going to attempt to wick this as fast as I possibly can. If there's one thing that I have in my favor though, it's that the Faro RTA, it's only a single coil, Real easy to wick. Real easy to wick. We're almost done. You know what I mean? We're almost done. Not much left now. That's it. We're wicked. Nope, I cut that way too short. Damn it. I'm just going to re-wick this real fast. You know, I got a little bit cocky there. <laughs> Might have cut the wick a little bit too quickly. A little, a little way too short. But that's fine. I, for a second, I considered just powering through and even knowing that it would have leaked all over me, I still considered not correcting my, my mistake. The trick to this is not to cut your wicks too short. Although I think that's the trick for any RTA. If I'm not mistaken, if you cut your wicks too short on any RTA, it's going to leak. That's just what I've heard. But it really is. It's super easy to wick. I, look, I already did it again. Just gonna measure this time. Just gonna measure this time so it's much easier. Single coil banger. In fact, for a very long time in the vlogs, like way back in the day when I was pre recording all my vlogs, I used to use the Faro Drip Tank, his first product, as like my juice tasting, uh, Go to like juice tasting guy. It was like my standby. All, you know, I would always wick it right after the vlogs was done. Vlogs was done. And I would use it for all my liquid tastings. But that's it. It's built. It's wicked. Now the liquid that we're going to put on the inside. Sure. Let's do Boule Bolu just because it was right on top. I'm just going to moisturize these coils. This was a really easy deck to build on. Honestly, this RTA, really very simple all around. All you had to do was install a single coil. So easy. Ridiculously easy. So let's screw this together. Pharaoh RTA! Unscrew the top. Let's fill it up with some Boule Bolu. I was saving uh, a white Pharaoh RTA. Shortly after I reviewed this the very first time and I was really, you know, really loving it, um, I got a white one in the mail and I thought, fuck, that's so cool, but I already have this one set up. I'm just going to hang on to it. And I hung on to that white Pharaoh for years, years. And I just recently finally got rid of it. Like finally, finally gave it away. I was like, nope, white Pharaoh RTA, you've been, you know, teasing me for too long. 
Let's see what we can do here. So there's the Pharaoh, not really matchy matchy with the drip tip situation. It was a bit of a tall RTA, I guess, comparatively even to like a Falcon is shorter. A Falcon is shorter. How does mine stack up? Mine's gonna be way shorter, way shorter RTA. Filled up with Boule Bolu. It's got a single coil. I believe it's a Fiends frame staple on the inside. Let's just try it, 0.22, 3.9 volts. Oh, that airflow is sharper than I remember it. Sharper airflow. Oh yeah, it's great. This is a great RTA. Great RTA. That flavor was banging. I knew it was Boule Bolu, but that flavor came out of there banging flavor. Banging. I like this. I like this RTA a lot. This RTA, dude, <laughs> this RTA has some really good flavor, like shockingly good. Like I don't remember the flavor being this good on this RTA, but I'm tasting a component of Boule Bolu, this banana that is just feels much more pungent than it ever has before. That flavor is kick ass. Okay, so it's a little bit loud. It's a little bit loud. It's a little bit loud and it's a little bit hollow. The airflow just feels what I would describe as hollow. Hollow airflow. Kind of weird and open and hollow. It doesn't feel smooth or swooshy. It feels sharp and hollow. The one redeeming factor of this, oh, I've turned the juice level, I've turned the juice flow off. That's right, you can adjust the juice flow. All right, juice flow full open, man. Let's get those, bu there's some bubbles happening. Bubbles, okay, bubbles. Uh, really good flavor, I don't love the airflow, but I do love the intensely crackly coil, and I am convinced that you could put crackly coils in the worst RDAs and RTAs on the planet, and it would make them much more enjoyable. Crackly coils are the saving grace of anything, and these coils in here are just crackling like crazy. In fact, they're crackling so much, it almost makes the airflow feel a little bit more turbulent maybe than it even really is. Dude, Pharaoh RTA looks like a tiger. Okay, super bloke. Okay, calm down. Uh, really loving this RTA. I knew I would. I got it out hoping that I would like it again. It's just during these COVID times when we're on quarantine, I can't, I just want to set stuff up. You know, I tore a bunch of stuff down today. And as soon as I'm in there in the bathroom, literally tearing stuff down and rinsing stuff and throwing coils away. And in my head, I'm thinking, oh, I'm going to set up that Pharaoh. You know, I can't wait to set up this. I can't wait to set up that. I'm always just thinking about new setups. In fact, this might become a new setup if I can find a red DHD tip for it, which I might not be able to. Okay, maybe I can't. Maybe I have to use this District 5 red one. That's kind of matchy. I feel like that's matchy to a certain level of comfortable matchiness. It is tall though. Man, that is a tall RTA, isn't it? Dang, that is a tall ass RTA. <whistles> Loving this. Loving this RTA, loving it. Well done, Rip Trippers. Well done with your Faro RTA. Still holds up. If anybody's curious, Faro RTA, if you're in desperate need of an RTA and you need it really soon, like before my Type 2 comes out, Faro RTA. It still holds up, single coil, banger. Banger, you're a banger. You're a banger and you know it. Awesome. Dude, I'm stoked on this retro vape. It still holds up. 
It still holds up no problem. It's vaping just as good as anything on my desk. Even my own RTA, even that Atmazoo tripod. This is a great vape. Great vape. Damn, that Boule Bolu though. That Boule Bolu though is delicious. All right, you guys. Well, listen, we're kind of coming down to the end here. Uh, This is actually the two hour mark. So I'm just going to finish up reading these super chats. We can chill for a little bit longer. Really appreciate you guys coming to hang out with me. But uh, let's go ahead and finish finish up these super chats and I'll give you, we'll do the full bumper this time. Oh, there's just one. That's just the last super chat from the Voorhees Files. Last super chat of the vlog from the Voorhees Files. Kiss. Still my favorite. Even have tattoos. Gene signed my... T- what? Gene signed your tattoo at a signing, which you then tattooed immediately? Fuck, that's cool. God damn it, the Voorhees Files. You have so much street cred for me right now. So much street cred. Fuck, that's cool. You got Gene tattooed on you. That's, I love that. I love it. I love everything about it. That's kick ass. I'm glad you love Kiss. I love me some Kiss and the Voorhees Files. You, you just, you got so, you're bona fide now. You're legitimate. You are bona fide, my friend. Bona fide. But, uh, all right, I think that's going to do it this week, you guys. I think, let me take a quick look. Let me move this COVID box, <laughs> move my COVID agius. I think uh, I think we're good. I think that's going to wrap up another vlog in the history books. This is The Chainsaw by Dixon Flannel. Go to Dixon Quality. No, they're not a sponsor of the vlog yet. Wink, Dixon Quality. This is The Chainsaw. Purchased it from Australia. Love it. Highly recommend their flannels. Okay, I'm just rambling at this point. But seriously, you guys, Thank you so much for coming to hang out. I know we're all on quarantine, but we are kind of all in this together. I'll be here for you guys whenever you need it. We're going to be streaming next week, uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday again. I'm considering throwing in a a late night Friday stream maybe one of these weeks coming up. Something just real cool and chill and we just hang out and uh, we just ask ridiculous questions about the universe. You know, like where did the pyramids come from? I don't know. How old are they? Older than you think. Oh, delirium. Okay. (laughs) One last super chat. Delirium. Very gracious of you, my man. Very gracious of you. Now you are officially the last super chat. Anyway, thank you guys. uh, Seriously, so much for coming out. I I love the vlog. I look forward to the vlog. I love that you guys love the vlog and I legitimately love just hanging out with you guys. This is my favorite part of the week. Hands down, favorite part of the week. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and wrap this up. Thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, We got That's What She Said coming up in about a half an hour on the Ruby Roo channel, the Vape Team, also on every Thursday night on the Vape Team channel. I don't know if anybody else is streaming tonight, but yeah, That's What She Said. Check them out. And uh, I I love you guys. Stay safe, you know, wash your hands. Don't touch your face. If you can stay home, stay home. I'm going to be streaming as much as I can. I'm trying to put out as much as I possibly can. And uh, we're, we're all in this together, you know? That's the only thing that we're, we're all in this together. And I really appreciate you guys. And uh, yeah, that's what I got. Thank you so much for watching, everybody. Remember that no matter what any crooked politician tells you, yeah, absolutely, let's keep on vaping. Be excellent to each other, guys. Peace.